Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, we're going to be looking at the gospel lesson which you had just previously heard read. And we'll start off this morning in the traditional way we do. Christ is risen. He is risen Alleluia. Or maybe what I should say, April Fool's. You know, that's the one thing about it is today is, is when we first started to look at, the, at, at Easter this year, it was one of those things as we were trying to, to prepare our things for it, we noticed that Easter was on April Fool's. And I got thinking about that, and it was just like, well, that's kind of a funny time for it to fall and, and all that. But then when I got really thinking about it, it really is, in a way, kind of appropriate. And I'll tell you why, in two ways. There's really two reasons why we today can celebrate uh, April Fool's on the same day as Easter. And it's like this. First of all, when we look at it from the standpoint of April Fool's, is, is that in this world... There is one who has tried to fool this entire world. Tried to make fools of each one of us. He made a fool of Adam and Eve in the garden. He made a fool of us every time that he is able to pull a trick on us. And see, that's the thing about it is, is that we're so easily to be tricked. I know, and I'm going to kind of throw this out here and add this this morning. I was talking to Brent and he was telling us about, uh, about this, uh, this, this hoax that was going on on the internet. They said, now, did you all know that you could now ride your bike to, uh, uh, oh, I can't even think of it, Putin Bay? They did put a big tunnel under there. <laughs> April Fools. The thing about it is, though, is, 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 you know, when we look at that, that little bitty trick, that little bitty thing that's there is one of those things that people were buying into it. They thought that somebody actually put one and you could ride your bike. You know, it's not outside of the realm of, of believability, but yet at the same time, it was just one of those little tricks that we play. It's kind of a child's game, you know, kind of a game that we do. However, the one that tries to trick us every day of our life, it's not about child's play because the result of that one even though that typically it's just one of those little things that make us feel a little bit foolish on April Fool's Day. It's, it's just kind of, it's, it's just simple fun. What Satan does for us is not. It's not child's play because the result of it comes to death. And the reality of it is, is that in our lives, that in our lives he tries to trick us every day. And he's so subtle about it. In fact, when he comes to us, he acts like he's our friend, doesn't he? He comes to us and he says, okay. He says, David, you know, come on, why don't you just do this? All right, that's all right. You know, I know that God said you shouldn't do this. But guess what? He's going to forgive you anyway. Oh, actually, look at it. You know, I know, Kathy, you know, you, you, why go to church today? After all, you're kind of tired. You worked real hard this week, right? You know, it's those kind of things right there. That he kind of talks to us and he tricks us. But the reality of it is, is when we fall for those things, we fall for a very deadly game. We fall for a deadly consequence. Because those type of things pull us away from God. They put a division between us and God because God tells us he's given us his commandments. In fact, last night I was watching the, the Charlton Heston Ten Commandments. And, you know, what a great thing it was to see, you know, thou shalt love God. God with all your heart. How many times does he tell me, oh, come on, you don't have to live with that. You know, you love God enough. You don't have to obey everything. You see, that's the big thing about it is, is that's what he wants to do. He wants to trick us into, into thinking, that, into, into pushing it aside. In fact, a lot of times what he does is he gets us so busy in this world and the things that we have to do, throwing the troubles and the trials and the tribulations at us. We know that. And believe me, me and my wife know the trials and tribulations. We've, this week, we've, we, you know, most of you know, three weeks ago our basement flooded. Well, guess what? It flooded again this weekend. And believe me, the struggles that you have, and it was like when we looked at it, it was, we had a great service here on Monday, Thursday, and we went home, and we didn't even know about it. We were sitting in our chair, and our daughter comes up, oh, Dad, there's two inches of water down here again. And it's just like, you know, that sinking feeling that's there. But the reality of it is, is that's what well, he tries, that's the way, way Satan tries to pull us away. He throws those trials and tribulations so that we forget God and forget about what's right there in front of us. And then what he does is he kind of, when, when we finally realize what it is that we've done and that we've disappointed uh, God, he says, April Fool's to us. 
<laughs> Look at you. You guys are the fool. You guys are the fool. Because that's what he's really ready to do. He's ready to point his finger at you as soon as you fall short and not do what you're supposed to do. What God commands you to do. When we sin, when we lie, when we, when we uh, don't love our neighbor as we should. You see, that's really what he does. And when we think about it. But yet, when we look at Easter, when we look at Easter, it really is where Jesus has turned the tables on Satan. I know I remember, I don't know how many of you have seen the movie, The Passion of Christ. But the Passion of Christ, there was one scene, especially when Jesus was being hung on the cross. The one thing that you saw as he was doing that, as he was suffering, and they were getting ready to crucify him is, and, and this is a wonderful thing, is, is that as you were looking at it, you saw Satan kind of wandering around through the crowd. And he would peek himself out and you would see the smirk on his face. Just knowing and thinking, oh look Jesus, look what I've done to you. You think you're so powerful, you think you're the son of God? <laughs> Look what I've done to you. And I guarantee you, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he was dancing. He was dancing around because the thing about it is, is he looked at that and he saw that and he said, Look what I've done to the Son of God. He wouldn't be tempted by me, but look at him now. And so he was laughing there. You see, that's what the power of the cross. In fact, Satan was so so convincing that he convinced himself that he could do that and that he had won but yet on that Easter morning when Jesus rose from that grave when Jesus came out of that that tomb that morning it was really a turnaround because it was there that he said to Satan April fool to you you thought that you were in control you thought you have it now I have victory over you I have victory in the cross See, I've overcome death. You couldn't hold that. And now for all those who have faith, for all those who trust in me, for all those, you, Satan, you're the one who has been made the fool. That's the thing about it is. For all them, they've made the fool. And that's where we today can proudly call ourselves and as children of God, we realize as our faith in Jesus Christ, we hold on to that because what we do is we see Jesus Christ. We've seen him walk from the tomb. You see, we have to realize where the, where, where, uh, the other aspect to this is that where April Fools came from. Most people don't realize. I didn't really realize where it came from until I looked it up. But it was back in 1582. It was Pope Gregory XIII that actually came up with a new calendar. You see, the thing about it was, was that the old calendar, April 1st, was actually the new year. And it was because it was spring and that, but, but, but uh, when, when uh, the Gregorian calendar came out, it switched it from, from April till, till January. And the thing about it was, there is the problem was, is that it's not like today where you can put something on the internet and it's all over the place. That time, it took a long time before people kind of did it. And so that's where people did it. They saw, they saw this fact and they still thought it was the beginning of the year. They were ready to celebrate New Year. When, in, a, in other words, it was pushed back to January. But see, the thing about it is, though, is for us, to realize that Easter is all about a new year, a new time, a new time in our lives. To realize that Easter is all about the new creation that God has made in us. To see it, to know it, and to live it. To realize that through that death and resurrection, God has brought something to us that it goes far beyond anything that's, that we can find in this world. No matter how hard we search, even how hard we work in our own lives, that we cannot do what Christ did on that cross in one in three days. For it was there that he took the weight of our sins, all of our sins. He took that weight on ourselves. You know, that's the thing about it is, is yeah... Aubrey's sins. He took Aubrey's sins. And she's got just a little bit of sins. But then there's Austin over here. He's got all kinds of sins that are right there. He took all those sins and he took those upon himself on that cross. 
And he died for those sins. He took those sins away so that now today, on Easter morning, we can proclaim the fact of what Jesus has done for us, that he forgives us our sins. That all of that sin is wiped away, no matter what sin Aubrey might have. And all of that sin that Austin had, that's been taken and that's been wiped away. It's no longer there. There are new people in Jesus Christ. In fact, it's there that we have the confidence to say that we are. In fact, Austin, say it. <laughs> oh, it doesn't always work the way you want it to. <laughs> he thought he was off the hook. And, but yeah, it's right there that we understand that we're children of God. And that's what this celebration is. And that's what the good news is about. But yet, sometimes we're kind of like those, the, the ladies that went to the tomb, right? They went there looking for Jesus because what, what happened? They got caught up in the world. They saw the crucifixion and they just didn't think and they just didn't hold on to the fact of what God, Jesus' promises are. You know, how many times do we do that? How many times do we hear the word of God and then kind of either forget it or, or kind of push it to the side or, or, or the worries of the world kind of gets in the way? And that's what happened to those ladies. They heard Jesus say that he would have to raise from the dead. They heard that type of thing. Even the disciples, they heard it. How many times did they tell Jesus? How many times did Jesus tell them that? In fact, Peter made the bold claim. He said, Jesus, you can't die. He says, Satan, you know, he says, that's when he, he told him, Satan, get behind me. He says, Peter, listen to me. I'm going to die, but I'm going to raise again from the dead in order to take sins away. But yet in the midst of this, in the midst of the trouble, what did Peter do? He went and hid. That's why, that's why the angel said, go tell the disciples of Peter. Because Peter needed to hear it more than anybody. But sometimes that's us too, isn't it? As much as we believe and we see it, we see Jesus right there in front of us. But then sometimes it gets lost, just like the little lamb inside of the, inside of the flowers up here. And sometimes we do it. We need to search for that. Sometimes we actually need to search for Jesus. We need to go look for Jesus. The great thing about it is, is for us who are children of God, we know where to find him. We know where he's at. And we know that where to do it by being in prayer, by being in, in church, by being in the word, by being in, in, in Bible study. But there's a lot of people out there in the world that don't. They're still searching. And the worst part about it is that Satan's got them fooled. He does. In fact, he uses something that's a creation of God and that's science. And believe me, coming from, from, from my background and everything, I, I, I like science. I like reading science and doing things. I like looking at stars and all that kind of stuff. But the thing about it is, though, is what Satan does is he kind of does an April Fool's trick on the people of the world. In fact, if you go out, out west, there are places where you can go and see and you see these huge telescopes, that, uh, radio telescopes that are pointed out to space. And this, 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 this notion about how there are little green men out there and we're trying to find them. In fact, they're, they're spending millions of dollars, probably billions of dollars, trying to, you know, to find just little segments of radio signals that aren't random, that, 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 that make something to try to find some intelligence out there so that we think that we're not alone. You see, the problem is, though, is Jesus is right in front of them. Jesus is right there. It's just like the lamb that's out there. He's there. You just have to, to push away the, 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 the flowers. You have to push away the things. Because the reality of it is, is that all they have to do is look at the DNA structure, the DNA in each one of us. How many strands of DNA do we have in each one of our cells? And look at that. And it's there that we see the intelligence we see the Creator. We see God Himself. In fact, if we look in creation, even if we look in the universe, we see that we're not alone, that there is a God, someone there who has, who has created all this, this, who is intelligent and wants to be with us. And that's God Himself. The problem is, is they're so tied up and they've got Satan playing so many tricks on them that they're searching in the wrong place, that they don't look where they should be looking. That's where God uses us as his children to go forward and to proclaim that Easter morning. That's really what he did. He used those women at the tomb to go forward out into the world to tell the disciples, to tell everybody that Christ is risen. risen Come on, you've had a little bit of sleep this morning. Christ is risen. 
And that's what they did is they went out and they proclaimed that. And so that's what Jesus wants us to do. As his people, as he wants us to go out and he wants us to proclaim that message. So for each of us, that's what Easter is all about. Reminding that we've been, we've been made anew by Jesus Christ. That we are new. That we are forgiven. And see, that's the great thing about it is. And that's that word. See, that's, that's how powerful that word forgiveness is. Because as, as, as the great Dr. Martin Luther had written into A Mighty Fortress, is there's one word. One word that will fell Satan. It only takes one word, and that's the word of forgiveness. And that's what Jesus Christ gave us on the cross. And that's what he shows us in the victory that we've won in him walking out of the tomb on Easter morning. And so now every day, every day we can live in that Easter blessing. Every day we know the, the blessing of Jesus Christ in our hearts. Every day we know that Christ is there and with us. So that every day we as his children can proclaim Christ is risen. <laughs> Christ is risen. Hallelujah. See, I got you excited. You are ready. <laughs> In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds centered and focused on our Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.